Hi, my name is Andrea Grace, and um, I'm coming to you from the Alila Center in Berkeley Heights in New Jersey. And um, I just had a uh, an interesting client, and um, I just thought I would share it with you because you might find it interesting too. Um, the session that the client came in for, she came from overseas. Um, she'd been referred to me by another client that lives here um, and so she wanted to kind of get clarity about whether she was on the right path, um, what is her purpose and then she had some kind of personal questions about uh, relationships and uh, relationship with herself, relationship with others, relationship with family which is very typical and optimal for a session like this um, because essentially everything is about relationship and we really just need to clear up our past relationships to then be able to align ourselves with having a really healthy relationship with ourselves to then have that relationship with our divine self and then ultimately with God. Um, so the modality is um, QHHT, Quantum Healing Hypnosis, which I learned from a woman called Dolores Cannon. And uh, I took her level one training in 2007, and then I took her uh, advanced training in 2009. Um, and... Um, and so sometimes uh, I, I have some, you know, I've been doing this a long time, but sometimes I have some interesting um, realizations that I didn't have before. So, uh, so the quantum healing hypnosis work is also known as past life regression. I typically don't use that or overuse that way to describe quantum healing hypnosis um, simply because it's not exactly accurate some of my because essentially more what's happening is that your the part of your consciousness that oversees your life um, actually has access to a library of stories that they can your infinite wisdom can pull down uh, your god mind can pull down and bring into this into your awareness through this kind of work <clears throat> to bring clarity around some of your themes or to even bring about an emotional state for you to connect, connect with something emotionally to feel a certain way about something perhaps to help you have empathy um, or to help you uh, gain a deeper intimacy in your relationships things like that so um, and then some of my clients don't see stories from the past sometimes they um, they might expand into being uh, experiencing an element like the air or like the earth or uh, a recent client was, was experienced the sun um, and then some clients actually have kind of more of a um, what I would call an experience to do with their soul lineage where they are able to connect with um, um, a, a part of them that is is not human that may be angelic or even of a different um, a different species, S uh, different planetary species. So uh, the sessions can be quite varied and unique, um, but this one's more of a of a traditional kind of session. Um, so uh, she came into the scene as a a young girl, uh, a maiden, seventeen years old. Uh, in England in the 1860s um, in this lifetime now she's not from that area she's from India originally and so again the typical questions for a session like this is you know what's my purpose what are my soul gifts um, and then if it is a traditional kind of life we ask the question is there anyone 
that she knows uh, in this lifetime from that lifetime. Now, in the we always take the time to do a pre-session discussion so I can learn about relationships and so I can also listen to the questions. Um, and so in this case, one of the, the characters that came up, I mean, it, the, the normal cast of characters are, are parents and siblings, uh, partners, close friends, that kind of thing. But in this case, um, and this was what was so fun for me, she brought up her, her dog. And her dog isn't very old, but he, um, he, he's sick a lot and, um, you know, gets infections sometimes. And so he kind of came up as part of her, her preliminary storytelling before we started the session. And um, so when I asked the question, so is there anyone from that lifetime that she knows in this lifetime now, um, in addition to two to other human beings, um, apparently one of the children, not her child, but one of the children that she had come across in that lifetime in England in the 1800s, um, one of those children had incarnated as her dog. Now, I, I have to say this took me aback a little bit because my assumption, I guess, was that we are going naturally through an evolutionary process, that we might kind of have an experience, our soul might have an experience as an element, um, you know, a very solid element like a rock or a mountain or the earth, and then kind of might add a little bit more energy, a little bit more consciousness, a little bit more life, or it speeds up a little bit to become a flower. A recent client was a flower. Uh, another recent client was a butterfly um, and then uh, you know m moving through then uh, I guess the evolutionary process towards self-determination I mean I can see how it's moving from from um, kind of a us universal consciousness to then a as, as a part of nature right and then to more the independent individualized consciousness, which is not necessarily evolution as I'm, you know, explain, as I'm saying it to you now, I'm kind of saying, okay, maybe actually self-determination and, and then narrowing down into an individualized um, point of consciousness may not be evolutionary. Maybe it's de devolution, <laughs> maybe. Um, but anyway, my, my assumption was that you wouldn't go, for example, from um, being a boy back to, uh, to me, back to being a dog. Uh, that to me, it was that, okay, you might have the experience of, of being a wild animal. And then the next time you come back as a pet, as you learn how to be domestic and to interact with humans and observe humans. And then the next lifetime, you might then, uh, to then return as and have the experience as um, as a boy, as a human being, and you know I would definitely say that about my own dog. I had I had a had a boy, and uh, I would say that he he exhibited like an eight year old child. My little girl dog, uh, she exhibited more like a three year old child um, so anyway I was surprised I was surprised that a boy from the 1800s had then late 1800s had then incarnated as a um, as a dog in this lifetime now the only times that I had heard where a human being was in the next lifetime would be an animal was because perhaps there had been some kind of soul contract to do with abuse. Let's, I'm just giving you an example, but for example, it's a, um, uh, let's say it was a, a, an abusive horse trader. 
and um, and so then that horse trader was so abusive to the horses that his next sole contract was to play the part or to be the horse the next lifetime so that he could experience that that's what I've heard so anyway when I asked more questions um, it was that the dog was bringing in that childlike innocence and that unconditional love um, into into that family environment and then interesting interestingly one of her kind of judgments or complaints about her parents was that they were like kids that they were like teenagers that they were party, partying all the time <laughs> sounds sounds fun to me but um anyway so so the dog was fitting fitting right into that and i thought that was was so interesting um so just just for your your reference another one of the questions that we ask is uh so in addition to what's my soul's purpose you know why did i incarnate here uh, at this time what part am i here to play in addition to that question um we also ask what are my soul gifts and one of the the beautiful things that she heard was that um, one of her soul's gifts is communication with animals if she practices and so I asked okay so what would that look like how can she practice that and uh, and so the the infinite wisdom or the higher self the deep down knowing um, kind of showed her a method which was essentially just you know clearing the mind and then centering into the body and then really connecting with unconditional love and um, and so then connecting through that unconditional love to the animal and then start asking questions and so we practiced it we practiced that in the session and um, and so I said okay well can you ask your dog um, you know how's he doing and it turns out he's happy and he's doing fine and then I asked well what does he need for his body to be well what kind of support does he need to be happy and, and, and his body to be well? And the answer that the dog gave through this practice animal communication session uh, was that he needs routine. Um, he needs to um, have routine meal times, routine times to be let out to go to the bathroom, routine times for exercise, for walks and things like that. And then that was interesting because that's also what the the infinite wisdom um, said to my client also that she needed a morning routine for her body to be well because she was feeling like she had put on some weight and um, and weight always has a purpose and it might not be the purpose that you think it is but oftentimes the purpose is to do with protection and that was true in this case and so what we um, unveiled was that she no longer needs that protection because we were able to clear up those past relationships and so she doesn't need to hold on to that weight anymore that it's safe to be in this world as herself with an open heart to be herself and um, and so then what would help her body balance would be to get into a routine to spend morning time in nature and in stillness um, and um, and so on and and so then just for fun just to share with you another soul gift that came up because some soul gifts are clear and obvious um, but some are latent uh, and haven't been revealed and so these were two that hadn't been revealed to her um, and so the second one was that she has the gift of healing through her hands and so her current vocation includes that that she heals um, so that she works with her hands rather and actually she makes things she bakes things and so, but uh, the direction that she was being given was that she needed to um, learn Reiki as a healing art and she can uh, use her hands for healing. And it doesn't have to be an applied session like the work that I do here, but it even could be that she could be listening to a friend and then she just reaches out and touches her friend and that would be, you know, bringing the healing. But that also that she would... Um, use her hands to bring that healing energy into the items that she she bakes so that those items then in turn become medicine um, for who, whomever consumes them so uh, it was it was really great um, I, I enjoyed this session so much she she left 
for having clarity. We released the past grievances that she had. She now shared God's perspective on the past. Um, and so now she, she saw it all with, with humor. And um, yeah, it was great. Um, yeah, everything has a purpose. Every, everything has a purpose. So I would love for you to uh, share with me in the comments below uh, your thoughts about what I've just shared um, and whether this was interesting for you. And if you'd like to see more of this kind of thing, give me some feedback. And even would you be interested in hearing her whole session? Um, let me know if that would be of interest to you. I didn't ask her, but I could. And it would be easy for me to edit out her... Um, you know, any personal references to names and things like that. Um, so, yeah, so let me know in the comments below if, um, yeah, if you'd like to hear her session, if this was interesting to me or if this inspired any thoughts for you. All right, everyone, have a good day. Bye.